And in this video, we're going to talk about ARMA 3 and performance, what you can do to increase it, and roughly what you can expect to achieve from it. So within the past week or so, I and a couple other people have been running the yet another ARMA benchmark using various settings, various overclocks, different RAM speeds, and memory allocators, and that kind of stuff. So I'm going to try to give you an overview on the changes and the effects that those things have and how you yourself, if you don't feel like overclocking or tinkering with your RAM speeds, timings, anything, another way you can bump up performance by anywhere between like 8 and 10 FPS, give or take. And this has been pretty consistent. So we're going to begin with that first, and that is using a custom memory allocator, specifically XTBB. Malik, also known as CMA. It's the Community Memory Allocator. So for this, big thing is you're going to be using large page support. So you have to have Windows 10 to be able to actually go about doing this. Now if you don't have Windows 10, one thing you can do is you can head over to yourcdkeys.com. This will also be linked in the description. And yes, I know it's called Wanders 10, but this one you can actually pay through PayPal, whereas one that's actually called Windows 10, you cannot, but this is actually the key that I'm using. I used it to upgrade from Windows 10 Home to Windows 10 Pro, and I can confirm that it works. It is very sketchy though, <laughs> but anyways, it does work. So next up, once assuming you're already on Windows 10 or you just upgraded Windows 10, all that fancy mumbo jumbo, what you're gonna do is go to the link in the description. You'll find the page to the Armaholic well, the Armaholic page for the memory allocator. Go ahead and download that. And what you want to do to actually install this is you head over to your Arma 3 folder, go to DLL. Here's where you drop in the allocator. So we go to malloc 64-bit AVX2, drag and drop the allocator right in there. Then we go back, we go to config with large pages, we're going to go to our ARMA3 root right here. See, I've already dragged and dropped it, but we drag and drop the cma.any right into our root. And that's all you have to do for that. Now you just have to actually enable, well, lock the large page support. So what we do is we go over here. Well, actually, in the installation, you can see the, yes, right here. You have to set lock pages in memory, so it tells you, you know, where to go and all that kind of stuff and what to do. So all you do is you just type in SEC POL. You go to local policies, user rights assignment, scroll down, and you will see lock pages in memory. All you have to do is right click, go to properties, add user or group, uh, advanced. You press find now, and there will be a huge list in here of just like Windows profiles and that kind of stuff. So all you would do is you would just select the account that you're on, press OK, OK, apply, OK, and then you're done. All you have to do is just restart your PC, launch up the Arma 3 launcher, did I hit it? Oh, there. Go to parameters, all parameters. And by default, you want to check memory allocator. Select CMA X64. And you want to check enabled large page support. Then you can press play. And once you get to the main menu, if you want to confirm that it is working, you would just go right over to your Arma 3, I like my background, Arma 3 folder. Go to that .txt file that gets created right below your any. And if it's working, it'll say using large pages. If not, I believe it says using normal pages. So that's what you would do there. Now, I have some examples of the difference that this actually makes. So first one, I'll just show mine. So here's the run with the yet another armor benchmark. Now, all of these runs were using standard settings at 1080p, just the standard preset, nothing tinkered or anything, just standard and vsync off, I believe. So, here is 10 runs without the memory allocator. 
I had a high run of 80.4. These are averages. A low of 74.4. So we'll just say the average is roughly 76.5, give or take a little bit. And with the allocator, as you can see, here's the information. I went from, say, 76.5 to 82. So my FPS average was 82 between 10 runs. Now, if you're wondering what these are, these are just the minimums on the far left, averages on the right, or on the middle, and maxes on the right. So it's from this graph here. That's what was uh, being used to record the numbers. So that gave a pretty consistent bump. Now onto the same thing with a 5800X. Without the allocator, it went from 80.7. Granted, these are I don't know if these are consistent runs, but I think these are just one-off runs, to 88.8 .8 with the allocator. So that's roughly an 8 FPS bump right there. I got... About a 6 FPS bump on my end, and my minimums increased a good bit. Same thing with maximums. And I had a friend run this that was on a 3700X, or no, just a 3700, sorry. And he went, I believe it was an average of 53, and then he, right after he enabled it, he went and he ran the benchmark, and it was a average of 62. So he got a 9 FPS bump just by doing this. So next what I want to talk about is actual in regards to overclocking because that's something you see people recommend and comment in regards to Arma because obviously you want as much performance as you can get out of your CPU because that is I'd say 95% of the time your limiting factor in Arma with most people. So you'll have a great CPU and even a crappy GPU like I have right now and for the most part you're going to still be CPU bound in, you know, a lot of cases, especially if it's a fairly high pop server with a lot going on. So now we move on to overclock. So this is with stock clocks, average of 82, minimum of 55. Now when I locked all my cores, that's 12 at 4.6 gigahertz, I went from 55, 82 to 58, 88 just pretty much right from the get-go. Actually, yes, he's right here. And that's what's the bump up in performance that I got there. So that obviously made a noticeable difference. I tried doing a couple different things to prove this without really, you know, cranking up a lot of the heat. And same thing goes with voltage. I didn't want to go really any higher with the voltage on this chip. But I noticed it did not make a difference. It actually hurt compared to you know these results by a good margin so i figured out you know what cores were being the most used in the benchmark in my case it was cores one two five and six and i went through and i overclocked those to 4.8 gigahertz and on the remaining the rest of the cores i had those set at 4.45 gigahertz and i was using i think it was like 1.4 volts to run it I cannot recall exactly, but my averages dropped. It was roughly at the point of having no overclock, like literally. And the only downside of that was I induced a good bit more heat as well because I was running a consistent 1.4-ish 1, 1 volts to the chip. So that seemed to just be more negatives than any positives that I was able to actually see. So it seems like for whatever reason, even though it doesn't necessarily make at least sense to me, just doing an all-core overclock seems to be the best bet for ARMA. Like, same thing, well, even on uh, high-core count chips, like the 5900X. Now, moving on to another big thing, that is memory, so your RAM. So as you can tell, I am at 3600 MHz, CL16, 1919-39 timings. And here we have a 9700K with essentially the same, you know, same megahertz, same timings, and his runs. So 
This is with CMA, the same allocator, and he is overclocked to 5.1 gigahertz with the same memory speeds. Now if we compare this to, actually sorry, it's different. So we compare this to his other run, so we can see here we have an average of 74 FPS with these RAM settings. You then overclock them to 4000 MHz, CL 15, 15, 15, 28. He went up to 83 from 74. So he got almost a 10 FPS increase on average just by his RAM alone. Now I've ordered essentially the same kit as what this guy is using, so I'm going to be tinkering around with this myself. And if I see any major differences, I might end up doing a kind of refresh of this video but as you can see it makes a big difference now we have another example example here with another ryzen cpu well with a ryzen cpu and we can compare first off with and without the memory allocator so without he went from 80.7 to 88.8 .8. now for these runs uh these are single runs with yet another another ARMA benchmark because of the way the AI kind of it kind of seems like it thinks for itself, well it does. It it's not super consistent, so you do have fluctuations varying by you know this okay amount. So you're usually within like four FPS, but I just want to point that out. But without the memory allocator, you went from 80.7 to 88.8. Now from here. Well, as far as I know, his CPU settings are the same. I know it's slightly overclocked. I just don't know by how much. But he went from 3800 MHz at CL16. Here's his actual timings. I believe they're the same for... The timings, anyways, are the same for the rest of the pictures. Or, sorry, the rest of the runs here from where my mouse cursor is and below. I'm not entirely sure on that, but that's just my assumption. So going from... 3800 megahertz to 39, 33 megahertz gave him a bump from 88.8 .8 to 97.1. Then going from 39.33 to 4000, again CL16, he went up to 101.2. So that gave a, just like we saw here with the 9700K, another very large difference in terms of your frame rate. Now, I don't know what his, actually, we can see what his lows are. So he had a low of 71 and a high of 153. If we compare that to example for my best run, I had a low of 60 and a high of 141. So it increased it just all across the board with Arma. So that's pretty much, I think, everything. So... The three big things that really seem to make a difference in armor performance, again, if you have Windows 10, you have, I would say, at least 16 gigabytes of RAM. I wouldn't, I don't know if I would do it with 8. I don't even know if you really can. But that gives you about a 10 FPS increase using the custom memory allocator. And then doing your overclocking, again, depending on your CPU, I don't have the results for whatever the stock speeds are on the 9700k to compare to unfortunately but at least in my case i went from 82.3 again with the custom memory allocator to a high of or average of 82 to an average of 88 just with an overclock and again using the memory allocator and as far as this guy i don't know what his results were at stock compared to whatever his overclock is and those results, unfortunately. I kind of wish I did, so I might end up asking him. But that makes another big improvement. And then, as far as memory goes, that gives you another big bump up. So, going from 3600 MHz, somewhat loose timings, average of 74, to 4000 MHz, Pretty tight timings for, actually very nice timings for that speed. He bumped up to 83. We see the same thing carry over to the 5800X's results. 3800 megahertz to 3933, you go from 88.8 .8 to 97.1. And from 3933 to 4000, you go from 97.1 to 101.2. So 
noticeable differences. Anyhow, that's all I really have for you. I hope this kind of informs some of you guys into ways that you can really increase your frame rate and armor. I noticed improvements like all across the board just by the overclock and using CMA. And this goes for really any game mode, especially King of the Hill, where I used to be decently bogged down and then just switching to the memory allocator. I was getting another seven or so FPS on average, just pretty consistently. At least that's what it felt like. I don't have exact comparisons because obviously the situation changes drastically, but there was an improvement. I have not ran King of the Hill or anything with an, with an overclock, and I have not gotten my new RAM in yet, so I can't compare timings and that kind of stuff, but judging from the benchmark, the results kind of speak for themselves and the differences, and what um, what setting does what. So how much does the memory allocator give? Roughly 10 FPS. How much does an overclock give? That is too dependent on your CPU, but in my case, going from stock to, which was also hitting about 4.9 gigahertz on certain cores, to 4.6 gigahertz on all cores, that gave me about, what was it, 82 to 88, so 6 FPS increase there. In my opinion, that's not worth the heat that I was putting through it in my case. It's probably worth it for the 5800X, so that's not going to be nearly as hot. And then the RAM differences seem to play probably one of the bigger roles. So you're getting pretty much a 10 FPS bump up, assuming you can hit these speeds with your memory. I don't know how much timing really affects it in Arma, but the actual frequency that it's running at definitely does. So I hope you found this informative. If you have any questions or anything like that, uh, this discussion has been going on in the Arma 3 Discord in the harm, Hardware versus Arma um, section. So feel free to ask there, and yeah, I hope this helped. Take care.